Hello, my name is Alex Zaitz and I present uh, Audio Zenith, a company that modifies OPPO headphones, OPPO PM1 and OPPO PM2 headphones. Um, many have been asking pretty much everybody who bought uh, our modification or who is looking into buying one, keep on asking what's being done to it, uh, why does it sound so different, what's going on. And uh, I decided it will be easier uh, and uh, easier to understand to just show the inside of all the modifications, or most of it, and uh, explain the phys physics of it. But before I do that, I wanted to say, I wanted to talk about the importance of uh, proper frequency response, the importance of neutrality um, with sound reproduction. Why, why is it so important for us, for me, and I believe should be um, incredibly important for everybody who wants to uh, listen to recordings, stereo recordings. And I have an example for that. What does every musician do before they start performing? They tune the, their instrument. Right before the performance, they have to tune the instrument. Everybody does that. Why would they do that? Because they want the proper tone uh, that this instrument can do, uh, they want to play it with the proper tonality. What does it mean for us? It means that we would want that music to be presented to us with the proper tonality as well. I mean, if a musician cares so much, every musician cares so much for proper tonality, why shouldn't we? And, uh, um, unfortunately, neither with uh, stereo equipment or, uh, nor with headphones, uh, we, you know, especially with headphones, nobody even knows what the target for uh, proper neutrality uh, is, where it sits, uh, how it should measure. Uh, but it doesn't mean that no one cares about it. Many people listen for it. Many people know what proper tonality is. Actually, we all know what proper tonality is. We, we listen to neutral sounds all our lives. How often do we spend time on listening to our headphones or stereo gear? Uh, not much. But, well, we're lucky if we can spend a few hours every single day listening to headphones or stereo. Uh, but we listen to absolute neutrality 24 hours a day. Even when we are asleep, we still listen. And we absolutely, each and every one of us, absolutely perfectly recognizes the proper tonality. Now, uh, going back to to our main topic. Uh, we know that, most of us do know, that transducer introduces close to 80% of all the imperfections during the reproduction of the recording content, which is just enormous, huge. When we take, uh, when we put that transducer into a room, room adds another huge portion. Um, I want to think, and I believe many of us do recognize that room makes uh, approximately 50% of a sound that we hear. So loudspeaker itself, or transducer, you know, headphone, uh, makes up for 50% of a sound. And the room itself makes for another 50% of a sound. That's why when we purchase a loudspeaker and bring it, you know, listen to it at the um, demo at the dealer and 
we hear it one way, then we bring it home, uh, set it up, and boom! All of a sudden, it just sounds different, really different. So we start shifting things around, we start moving loudspeakers uh, against uh, uh, the walls and the back wall and front wall and against our listening chair, we start moving our listening chair and so on and so forth. So we start tuning the system, the whole system. And the way I see it, the whole system is, uh, it's like a triangle, okay? One corner of that triangle is a listener. Second corner of that triangle is a loudspeaker. And the third corner of that triangle is a room. So all together, it's the system, it's like uh, uh, the coupler, call it. So we should look at every uh, device that reproduces the sound as, as a whole, one system. In the, when, we talk about, uh, when we talk about headphones, uh, the listener is our ear. Uh, which is one corner of that triangle. Second corner is a transducer, which is a driver itself. And the third corner, which is a room in, uh, with a stereo, uh, with the you know, home listening, right? Uh, with headphones, the third corner is the coupler itself, is the ear pad. And the whole you know, headphone system which consists of the driver, an ear pad, and a, and a buffalo of a driver. And that whole thing coupled to our ear becomes an enclosed system. Similar to uh, what, what's going on, what's happening in our listening rooms when we bring the loudspeaker in. Now, uh, the, how, how different the sound can be I am actually showing right now. I'm showing to you right now. Uh, I'm doing this recording in a, in a, an empty room, and you you can hear how much reverberation, how much uh, of an add-on there is to my voice. Uh, you don't know my voice, how it sounds. I mean, I don't know how many of you have heard me live, but. It, you know, you don't even need to know that to recognize how much this room is adding to my voice as we speak right now. So I wanted to show you dimensions of this room so you can get a better idea. I'll turn the camera around. So take a look. Okay, now, why did I do that? Um, the second portion of this video is going to be recorded in the same size room, same volume. Um, it, it's maybe a little bit more narrow, but a little bit longer. But overall, it's the same size room. And it's almost as empty, but it's a little bit, it's treated a little bit acoustically treated. And uh, um, you, will, you will hear in the second portion of my video how drastically it changes the recording of my voice. Um, and I'll continue about uh, my triangle, this, uh, the coupler. So when, uh, when we look at the original Oppo headphones, either PM1, let's take PM1 for example, it comes with three different ear pads, and that's a your tuning. That is basically uh, uh, the Oppo's way of uh, slightly shaping the sound to your liking, okay, or you know making it more suitable for you. Uh, they have three different ear pads: uh, original leather ear pads. Then uh, velour earpads and uh, 
slightly differently uh, perforated leather ear pads uh, with some like half of the inner portion of an ear pad uh, being perforated and half of it being plain, plain leather. Why do they do that? And uh, uh, on inner fidelity, you can take a look at their uh, the measurements for all three sets of ear pads, and they all vary. They all vary. Uh, in our measurements, it's it, it shows a bit more significant difference between uh, these three ear pads uh, measured frequency response. I mean, more significant than what you can see on inner fidelity, but on inner fidelity you can see that to maybe to a lesser extent, but it's, you know, you can clearly see up to 2 to 3 dBs difference in frequency response uh, that depends on the different type of ear pad used. So, uh, that ear pad is that coupler, is that room where we are listening. When we take, uh, when we start modifying, it's the, it's the first thing that we take, the ear pad. And I want to show what we've discovered and uh, what needs to be done in order to uh, bring the sound to, to the way we think it, it, it should sound. I'll take the, the ear pad here. Okay, you see a circular opening. That is a, a part of an ear pad that goes like this. I'll, I'll put it together. Uh, I reassembled it so you can see everything more clear. The ear pad itself consists of uh, two major portions, three major portions. Uh, one is the plastic. Uh, part of it. Second one is the foam which is glued uh, to the base which is plastic and then on top of it there is a fabric either velour or leather or uh, for PM2 it's a pleather uh, differently perforated from original PM1 leather. So even uh, so those three pads, original OPPO pads, ear pads, that come with uh, PM1, the only difference between them is the material uh, that, that covers the, the foam. Velour, leather, uh, and differently perforated leather. Yet they all make difference in sound. And it measures, they all measure differently. And that's the only change between them, right? Is the material. Uh, what we do change is, 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 is much more, I mean, way more than just the material. So you can imagine uh, the, the, how dramatic those changes are that we do make. Uh, now, you look at the you look at the ear pad and the ear pad is oval it's perfectly oval but the opening of a driver is perfectly circular so what happens when the sound wave leaves the me membrane and goes out of the circular opening it goes into an oval uh, ear pad. It starts. It, it becomes reshaped. The the sound wave becomes reshaped. Why? Because I mean, before it hits our ears, uh, that the center portion is circular. So it goes like that. It goes in there, and then the wave hits these two zones of a different pressure, different air pressure, okay, here and here. 
somehow it needs to be mitigated. Otherwise, you you, you know you have uh, you have like buildups of pressure within these two zones. That, you know somehow it needs to be mitigated. Otherwise, you have you have problems. You have uh, you start having dips and peaks in the frequency response. Uh, the the way one can easily understand why this is happening is imagine the sound wave leaves the uh, the driver over here it hits the wall which is foam gets some of it gets absorbed okay and then it gets reflected reflected and goes into our ear okay so there is a certain distance it has to travel this portion of it but these portions of it have a different distance to travel so it has to hit this portion has to go you know longer uh, travel longer before it gets reflected and bounced you know into our eardrum and it's it's approximately the same effect as you would uh, take your loudspeakers right and put them in uh, in one end of the room okay uh, and then listen to it right and then put them perpendicular to their original position uh, on the other you know shorter end of your room okay and sit even the same distance they're gonna sound very very different why? because the sound wave travels differently so same thing here uh, when you have these variations the of the you know with the length of a travel of the sound wave it reaches different portion and diff different uh, wavelength of the sound will reach our ears differently, slightly. Uh, and that introduces, you know, that introduces peaks and dips in the frequency response, that introduces some variations in timing of uh, our arrival of the, of the sound to our eardrum. So certain waves, I mean certain, certain uh, frequencies uh, will arrive slightly delayed. So that's, those things do need to be mitigated. How do you mitigate that? Well, imagine if, uh, so let's say it's the same frequency, say mm, 3000 Hz, for example. So this 3000 Hz goes here, very short distance, some of it gets absorbed and some of it gets reflected over to into our eardrum same thing on this side but here it's further so more of it will will not be reflected at the same time as, as over here more of it will hit our ear but then some of it will be delayed much more and it will hit our eardrum a little bit later with a delay when you know when it but you know we when we listen we listen to music we don't listen to frequency uh, just frequency response slips uh, it, it, it it changes the timber in, in order to mitigate that what we can do is we can uh, change the density of a, of a foam in in these places here and here then it will bounce faster and less of it gets absorbed by the uh, uh, less of it gets absorbed by the foam okay so more of it gets reflected this way and if we do it a certain way uh, so he, here and here stiffer okay it will uh, it will kind of you know we can kind of equalize the 
the arrived sound. So that's uh, one way how you can uh, how you can uh, treat this imperfection that we have to deal with within the couple. Uh, another thing that is very concerning in um, the original design it's the uh, how many ridges uh, air wave sound wave has to go through before it hits our eardrum so it leaves the driver and you can see how you know how how it's how it's uneven over here Okay, how it's uneven over here. It has to hit this ridge first. Then I'll put uh, this portion of the ear pad on top and you can see that there is more to it, much more to it. Okay, you see all of this, all of this it has to hit first. Okay, all of these ridges. before it comes into our ear. And you can only imagine what's going on within this place. You know, you, you have all kinds of um, issues with this. Why? Why do you have issues with, uh, with this? Try a simple, a simple experiment, right? Try and take, um, take a look at, the, at the any loudspeaker and see how Twitter is mounted to, uh, mounted to a buffalo. And you will see that most Twitters are perfectly flash with the buffalo. And there is a reason for that. Because once, you know, if, if it's not, if you start having ridges, like, you know, you see over here, then frequency response changes drastically. And not only that, not only frequency response, but dispersion pattern also changes quite drastically. Those things uh, eventually, when when sound wave reaches our eardrum, it's it you know it becomes significantly changed. Uh, you can take you can take if you have a measurement microphone, you can take you know any loudspeaker and uh, put uh, a piece of cardboard somewhere next to a tweeter. Okay? Attach it with a scotch tape, right? You will slightly change, you will, you will introduce that ridge I'm talking about. And then measure the response of that tweeter uh, one meter away from the, you know, on axis from, from the tip of the uh, microphone to the driver. Measure frequency response of that uh, tweeter. Then take that cardboard away uh, and measure again, you will see a huge difference in the frequency response. Okay? So that's exactly what we hear. You know, we are much closer to, uh, to a driver with, you know, our eardrum is much closer to a driver than uh, this, you know, when, when we take microphone, uh, measurement microphone, uh, one meter away from the driver, right? It's like, uh, another example would be, you have a loudspeaker in a room and you have a ton of furniture that introduces different ridges between you and, uh, and, uh, and the loudspeaker, okay? So this is, you know, precisely what you have here. Lots of edges, rough edges, uh, different, you know, different shape here, circular opening, oval here. It's like, you know, quite messy arrangement. So to mitigate that, uh, we, we, we do some work on the baffle of, of the transducer itself. we make it more smooth okay so the sound doesn't have to I mean doesn't hit 
all these regions openly okay and uh, doesn't get all these crooked reflections off of it uh, you know for that we have to it's not you can't just you know you can't just put say you know some foam on top here and call it a day it doesn't work like that uh, you have to you know you have to do a combination of different materials with different reflection reflecting properties different observing properties uh, different damping properties uh, and combine them together and make some sort of a structure that will mitigate uh, all these issues. Then we have to physically uh, we have to physically modify the this portion of of the uh, the ear pad, plastic portion of the ear pad, uh, pad to get rid of of some some uh, excessive plastic uh, that is that sits on the way of the wave then many complain about uh, original OPPO PM1 and PM2 being kind of closed in not very open not airy and so on so we thought okay how do you do that how do you fix uh, issue like that and we figured uh, the good way would be to uh, somehow virtually increase the air volume within the coupler um, and one way of doing that would be just reshaping the, the ear pad itself making it you know bigger because the original one is, is many complaints it's quite small it barely fits average ears so it would have been, you know, great if we were to just put the bigger ear pad, right? Increase the volume, uh, and it would be easy, right? But then headphone would be ugly. So uh, we figured, no, I'm not gonna do that. But how else would you change the in inner volume uh, within the coupler? And we decided to go this route we decided to introduce a pass-through channels uh, that work like this originally it, uh, the pad, the foam goes flash with the plastic okay, it goes flash like that what we do, we lift it up like so and it's like it goes it becomes like this uh, how to make it like that it sits like this and over here oh, on this side we have those pass through channels for the air to go in and out okay and this significantly increases the inner volume within the coupler making it a bit more airy sounding with uh, with a bigger sound stage and a bit better imaging so uh, also what it does it also you know slightly modifies the frequency response too because you know it's already not not very enclosed uh, structure it's much more open structure so it slightly modifies the frequency response as well on top of it uh, it makes it more the it makes the driver sit on our ear a little bit more angled uh, which works you know much better for imaging too you know you you compare flash seating driver okay to an angle driver like like so of course the one that's angled you will hear more precise imaging with the one that's more angled uh, 
better aligned with the entry, better aligned with the pinna of your ear. So that also helps with the image. And um, I think that's about it, about uh, the ear pad. Um, so ear pad, once again, it's different density. It is angled. Some changes to uh, a plastic portion of the pad, uh, reshaping the, uh, of that uh, plastic portion of the pad, so getting rid of all the ridges. And then uh, between the pad and the buffle itself, we we do a lot of uh, uh, work to smooth out the ridges, smooth out the path that sound wave has to go through before it reaches our ear canal. And uh, uh, by introducing some some uh, absorbers and reflectors uh, sitting between the the buffle of a driver and and our ear, pretty much, and the ear pad, and then our ear, and then we are dealing with with these two areas, with these two dead zones, in order to smooth out the effect of oval ear pad sitting on a circular driver, and I will continue with uh, the explanations of what we do to the uh, driver itself and what we do to the back side of the driver and what we do uh, to a, an enclosure of that driver uh, in my next video which is going to be filmed in, uh, in acoustically treated room. Stay tuned and thank you very much for watching.